Hey everyone, welcome back to Aircraft Technician Network, your ultimate guide to careers in aviation. If you're passionate about aircraft maintenance and are considering becoming a licensed aircraft engineer to work on an aircraft, you're in the right place. Today, we'll be breaking down everything you need to know about becoming a B1 or B2 licensed aircraft engineer under ESA Part 66. So, let's get started. To start, let's talk about the educational requirements. Completing an approved training program at an ESA Part 147 maintenance training organization is highly recommended. These programs cover all the necessary theoretical knowledge and practical skills you'll need. The curriculum includes subjects like aircraft structures, aerodynamics, avionics, mechanical systems, electrical systems, and of course, regulatory requirements. Next up, practical experience. This is where things get a bit detailed. For a B1 license, which focuses on mechanical systems, you'll need five years of practical maintenance experience if you haven't trained in an approved Part 147 organization. If you have trained in one, the required experience is reduced to two years. This training is often conducted by aviation maintenance schools, trade schools or training organizations approved by the aviation authority of the country where you intend to work or obtaining a degree in aeronautical engineering with affiliated packages. The same also applies for the B2 license, which focuses on avionic systems. Now, let's talk about the exams and assessments. You'll need to pass a series of modular examinations covering a wide range of topics such as aviation legislation, aircraft aerodynamics, structures and systems, propulsion, and avionics. The specific modules required will vary depending on whether you're going for a B1 or B2 license. In addition to theoretical exams, you must also demonstrate practical competence through assessments. This involves performing maintenance tasks under supervision to ensure you have the necessary skills. And don't forget, candidates must have a thorough understanding of aviation regulations and standards as outlined by ESA. You must be at least 18 years old and meet specific medical fitness standards as well. You have to pass the licensing examinations conducted by the Aviation Authority. These exams typically include written, oral and practical assessments to test your knowledge and competence in specific aircraft systems and maintenance procedures. The exams are based on the regulations and standards set by the Aviation Authority. After getting your ESA Part 66 Aircraft Maintenance License AML, you need to get an aircraft type rating TR, endorsed in the AML. You need a type ratings to indicate your competence to perform maintenance on a particular aircraft type. Type rating is aircraft specific, for example, such as ratings on Boeing 737-500, Airbus A320-200, G650, ERJ145, Bell 412, or Augusta 139, etc. You could get yourself type rated on an aircraft of your choice, or get employed and be type rated by your employer. To do this, an applicant needs type training both theoretical and practical, and on the job training for the first type rating. It's essential to obtain specific type ratings for the aircraft you wish to work on. Type ratings indicate your competence to perform maintenance on a particular aircraft type. This often involves completing additional training and passing type-specific exams or assessments. Note, an AML issued by a country other than ESA member states cannot be rendered valid as ESA Part 66 AML as Part 66 licenses issued by the countries other than ESA member states are not mutually recognized in the European system. This often involves completing additional training and passing specific exams or assessments. The specific requirements for work experience vary by aviation authority, but generally range from two to five years, depending on the type of training program completed. Your experience should be relevant to the category of license you're pursuing, whether it's B1 or B2 it needs to be comprehensive covering various maintenance tasks and environments. This ensures you get a well-rounded understanding of aircraft maintenance. Demonstrating proficiency in the English language is crucial, as it is the international language of aviation. The level of proficiency required may vary depending on the aviation authority or the specific airline or organization you intend to work for, Staying updated with the latest developments in aircraft technology and maintenance practices is vital. This may involve participating in recurrent training programs and completing additional courses to maintain and renew your license. Get other certifications to enhance your skills. 
it's important to note that the specific requirements and procedures for obtaining a B1 or B2 license can vary between countries and aviation authorities. Therefore, it's advisable to check with the relevant aviation authority in your country or the country where you intend to work to ensure you have the most accurate and up-to-date information. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon to stay updated with our latest content. Let us know in the comments if you have any questions about becoming a licensed aircraft engineer, or if there are other aviation topics you'd like us to cover. Until next time, keep soaring high and reaching for your aviation dreams.